you with another slow fashion video. This week, I thought I would share my top ways to build a sustainable wardrobe on a budget. I think there is this crazy misconception, well, it's not crazy, but this giant misconception that having a sustainable wardrobe has to cost a lot of money and that you have to only buy very expensive, like recycled hemp pants that were dyed with some sort of exotic fruit skin, but that's just not the case. I think there are so many great alternatives to building a sustainable wardrobe without having to spend a lot of money. What I really think it's about is a mindset shift from the convenience and disposability to a shift over to more intentionality and planning and saving and creativity, which does take a little bit of a mindset shift, but I think it's way more worth it in the end. So uh, grab your tea and I'm gonna go over the top five, there might even be six uh, ways that I think you can build a sustainable wardrobe on a budget. Okay, let's jump on in. This first one will come as no surprise to you if you have been around this channel for a while. It is learning how to shop your closet and love what you already have. I think this takes time and practice and I have an entire playlist dedicated to how to shop your closet. I know this is actually really difficult in practice. I also love to shop and I love to add things to my closet. I am definitely not immune. But I do think it's so much easier to shop less when you focus more on what you already have versus the fact that you just have to shop less. This can actually be a really fun, creative endeavor if you do it regularly. So rather than spending money on items that you might not need or that might look awesome on someone else but that don't suit you or your style or your personality at all, I think it's so much more beneficial if we take the time to get into loving what we already have and really discovering why we like certain things in our closet or why we don't. I've also started a studio, which is a series of live events where I show you how to shop your closet and get more creative with what you already have. We had our first session. Oh, and I wanted to say thank you if you came. A uh, huge thank you to all of you who came to the studio. It was so much fun. Learn how to maintain and repair your clothes is I think incredibly important and can make such a difference to really showing some love for what you already wear and it's really rewarding if you you know become bffs with a seamstress or a tailor or a youtube channel that can help you just mend certain things and get more wear out of your clothes you can take something to the tailor for around 25 dollars and have it adjusted to fit your body type, or perhaps just changed up a little if you're tired of wearing it a certain way. These small tailoring adjustments can create an entirely new garment and make your wardrobe feel like new again for a fraction of the cost of something new. The more we take care of our clothes and love them, no matter where we purchased them. Even if you purchase something fast fashion, I think it's equally important to take really good care of it. That way you have it in your closet for longer, you're able to mix and match it and get more use out of it, and you'll find more satisfaction in your closet. Okay. The art of saving and learning about cost per wear is another difficult one to master, but I think the more you employ saving up for something, you tend to want to care for that piece better. I think this is almost like a lost art, mostly because a lot of brands these days just change over their inventory so often to add that sense of urgency. But if you're looking at a lot of slow fashion brands or ethical brands whose price point might be higher because it's actually reflecting the true cost and value of that garment, which includes the environmental and humanitarian costs, they will require a little bit more saving up. But the beauty of shopping from these brands is that their offering doesn't change fast and you are able to save up for a certain piece knowing that they'll either restock the same item or something very similar. My favorite brands who do this are Public Habit. They're fairly new, but they use a lot of dead stock materials and they have just beautiful classic pieces 
my pals at Power of My People in Canada create the most wonderful shirts, always classic, and they keep repeating some of the favorites. So you know you'll be able to save up and get the shirt you always wanted. Another great company that does this, I think personally, is Laura Jean. Her pieces are a little bit more like artwork, um, and yet they have such a great timeless essence to them. I also mentioned cost per wear into this because I think learning how to calculate your cost per wear is really important. And I do this with clothing that either I'm about to purchase that are a lot more of an investment, as well as items that are already in my closet to give me an idea of whether that was a good investment or not. The way cost per wear works is very simple. It's my favorite kind of math, fashion math. You just take the total cost of the garment and divide it by the amount of times that you estimate you'll wear it or that you have worn it. The lower you can get your cost per wear, the better of an investment it is. So cost per wear is something that makes our clothing investment a little bit more tangible. And if you're like me, I'd, it's so much harder to argue with numbers, you know, like they don't lie. This next one is also probably not going to be news uh, or groundbreaking to you who have been here for a while, but shopping secondhand, whether it's thrift, vintage, uh, designer consignment, or simple resale is probably one of my absolute favorite ways to build a sustainable wardrobe on a budget. And that's because when you shop secondhand, you are not using virgin resources from the planet to create something new. You are encouraging a circular economy and keeping them out of landfill. Gosh, this is just my favorite. In fact, I have done a video all about how to shop secondhand or thrift like a pro. I will link it up here and uh, in the description box below for you. Whether you're looking for designer or vintage high-end items, you can still get great pieces at a fraction of the cost of something new. There are some great online spots like eBay, Etsy that ship all over the world. ThreadUp, I believe, is growing. Poshmark is fantastic if you're in North America. But there are also larger companies like ASOS Marketplace that are offering a secondhand section or like Farfetch is another one. I have to add that secondhand shopping isn't only great for your wallet because you're getting these incredible garments for a fraction of the price, but it's also nice because it allows you to experiment a little bit with perhaps altering or doing DIYs. That way, if you didn't spend a huge amount on the garment, you're more, you know, open to perhaps experimenting with it and really getting creative again with your closet. This next one is a little bit difficult because we are currently in the midst of a global pandemic, but the sharing economy is also another one that is growing and I think for great reason. Swap parties are fantastic because they often only require a small entry fee and then you literally get a whole new set of pieces equivalent to what you brought in. So there isn't a heavy cash outset and you're getting some really cool items, especially if you are swapping with people whose style you love. There are so many fabulous rentals that you can really use to inject a different personality and style into your closet. The rental economy is something that I again love because it's promoting circularity and it's not promoting obsolescence in design or a more linear economy where we just use something based on convenience and then throw it away when we're done with it. Rentals are often so much more affordable because you can do it by month or you can just rent a piece again for a fraction of the cost of something new. But you can also add items that maybe you're just not sure about. Maybe you want to change your personal style. Maybe your body is changing and you're not quite sure where it's going to end up. A rental is a really cool place to bridge that gap of the unknown without having to make a huge investment. And it's also a much more conscious choice. This last one is a little bit more intangible and as I mentioned does take a lot of time and perhaps introspection and spending time with your closet, but knowing your personal style really well 
is I think paramount to building a sustainable closet on a budget. A lot of the purchases that we get sucked into buying and spending money on are very emotional. The more confident and comfortable you are in your personal style, the less that these like ads and sense of urgency can play on your emotion because you are so confident. Like you know what you want, you know what looks good, and you know what's gonna suit your lifestyle. I think there are some really great resources to help you build your personal style. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I think my channel is okay at doing that. <laughs> I hope it is. Um, I have a really old video, but I think it still applies on how to build your personal style or how to find it. Other channels that I would highly recommend are Audrey Coyne, uh, Sing Hansen over at Use Less is fantastic, and I absolutely love Eunice on Instagram. Her handle is Fashion Nth. I'm gonna leave all of these resources in the description box below. So that is what I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was a little bit more of a chatty one than a fashion one, but I hope you found those points interesting. Let me know if you have any tips or tricks that allow you to build a sustainable wardrobe on a budget. Uh, I'd love to know. I think you have always the best comments and answers. Uh, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it or if you learned something new hit subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in another slow fashion video. I hope you are all doing super well uh, and that you have a wonderful week ahead. Thank you, thank you again for watching. Ciao!